Hello and welcome. I'm Nick Griffin, Vice President of the Alliance for Peace and Freedom. I'm joined today in the Vox Box by, on my right, Athanasios Constantinou, from MEP from Golden Dawn. Uh, on my left here, Milan Ulrich, uh, MEP from People's Party of Slovakia. To my far right, Tida Ionescu from Nova Drapta, the new right in Romania. And on the left, but not really, Martin, uh, Gonzalo Martin Garcia from National Democracia in Spain. Again, thank you for joining us. We're very pushed for time, so I'll get straight into the question. First one for you, Asos. Yes, please. Um, Erdogan, the president, president of Turkey, has threatened that unless the European Union give him lots of money and accept him uh, invading uh, part of Syria, uh, then he will take revenge by opening the doors and letting a million or more migrants into Europe. Do you believe that this is a serious threat and what will happen in Greece if it is? First of all, I have to confess that Mr. Erdogan is a very cunning politician. Therefore, never, never, I trust him what he says. Mm -hmm. He can do whatever he wants according to his uh, strategic planning. That means, according to my perception, he could uh, act like that, mm -hmm. opening suddenly the borders and um, giving a flood of refugees in European soil. And if he does, how will people in Greece respond to that? I believe that uh, will bring a chain of reactions in the national population because already we have uh, enough troubles and problems with the illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. You can imagine very easily if uh, a million or more of new wave of immigrants, what could be done in the local population. Yeah, sure. Well, very interesting. I'm sure, as you say, <laughs> Mr Erdogan will act one way or another, so we will yeah. find out. Right, moving swiftly on. Milan, I was reading just the other day a, a Soros-funded study uh, about right-wing extremism uh, in Slovakia, mm. which in particular uh, mentions uh, People's Party of Slovakia, Labour's party, as a major threat and so on. Um, but uh, they said that Slovakia is particularly Russophile, um, why is Slova for British people and so on? We tend to think still of Czechoslovakia. Mm -hmm. So why is che is the Czech Republic really very liberal and leans towards the West, whereas Slovakia has a powerful nationalist movement and this uh, healthy tendency to stand towards traditionalist Russia <laughs> rather than the liberal West? I think the main difference between Slovakia and Czech is that uh, in Slovakia we are more a Catholic people than in uh, Czech Republic, so it, naturally we are more conservative than they are, but uh, regarding to, to the study of Soros uh, Foundation or University or what, whatever it is, of course uh, they are paid to write such things, so it's mm -hmm. uh, obvious they uh, publish those things that uh, we all are Russophiles and uh, so on. Uh, actually, the public mood in Slovakia is that most of or majority of the people is uh, positively uh, inclined to the Russia because of uh, historical relations. Of course, uh, when you look at the history, uh, Slovakian people, I don't talk about the government, but about the common people, in uh, the biggest conflicts they always tend to uh, stay on the side of the Russia or on, on the side of Slavic nations, whether they on the side of, uh, for example, the United States. Of course, it's uh, natural because the United States are far away and their uh, ideology and uh, everything is completely different than in our culture. So uh, for us, uh, the Russia is a natural ally, uh, although we have some, some, uh, some uh, uh, doubts about the current Russian policy, but generally uh, we find the Russian uh, as our friends, we consider Good. it as friends. Good. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Tudor. Yes. Um, in regards to Brexit, Boris Johnson has signalled that if he gets the sort of Brexit he wants, that Britain will be open for mass skilled immigration. So he's saying we're not going to have uh, Africans who don't have any qualifications, but don't worry, we're going to have lots of um, migrants coming in to do things such as work in the health service. Now, my wife works in the health service. I know a lot of the nurses that she comes across are, are Romanians. These are young Romanians now living in Britain uh, and uh, having families in Britain. So especially if Johnson gets his way and this goes on even more, what impact does it have on a country like Romania to lose so many young people? Well, Romania faces a uh, brain drain right now. Uh, actually, uh, there are over 5 million Romanians who left their country and are currently living outside their borders. Out of in how many in total? Over 5 million. Yeah, and how many total population? We have uh, 
in, uh, in Romania 23 million. Wow. We used to have in Romania 23 million, number seven in the European Union mm -hmm. in terms of population and uh, territory. We also have three million in the Republic of Moldavia. Mm -hmm. We are, let's say, um, over 30 million nation. But this is not the issue. The issue is that the socialist and liberal governments simply chased away over 5 million Romanians to get rid of unemployment, to get wow. rid of social protests, to get, get rid of problems. These Romanians didn't uh, want it to live abroad. They were forced mm -hmm. to, to leave their country, to leave their families and to leave their homes. And we, uh, Partidul Noua Dreapta, as a nationalist party, want to bring back these Romanians uh, from the UK, from Italy, from Spain, from everywhere, because their future must be in Romania. You know, Actually, statistically, only Syria is in a worse situation than Romania. Wow. Because from Syria left five million people, but there is a civil war going on in Syria. And in Romania, five million Romanians left, and there is theoretically wow. yeah. peace. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can I just one supplementary question to this? Please. Um, quite often in the British newspapers, you hear of someone committing some horrible crime and they say he's a Romanian. Uh, but you look at the picture and you think, I don't think this is a Romanian. So if, when you say five million have left, how many of them, let's be blunt, are gypsies? And how many are Romanians? There is a gypsy minority in Romania, as there is a very large uh, gypsy minority in Hungary, uh, yeah. Bulgaria, Serbia, even Slovakia. Yeah. Uh, even Spain and so on, because they are everywhere, yes. they are not only in Romania. Uh, in terms of percentage, I think the gypsy minority in Hungary is the largest, mm -hmm. in terms of percentage, I repeat. Uh, if we are talking about Romania, definitely a lot of gypsies left Romania, and they are, you know, more uh, on the news, because uh, probably they earn their living in a an honest way, you know. Yes. If Romanians are going to work every day, you don't see them in the streets, you don't see them yeah. begging, you don't see them stealing. But gypsies, you see them everywhere. And this is why uh, we have uh, still such a bad image in Europe, and that's a pity, because we are one of the oldest nations in Europe and we really don't deserve our image to yeah. be associated with a minority who came from uh, Asia, some uh, yep. 700 years ago. Sure. Well, don't worry. I'm sure most of our viewers understand and definitely sympathise with the, the real Romanians. We're running very short on time, so I'd like to give you... Um, now, the two MEPs will be used to this. You have one minute. The 60 seconds ration of democracy in the parliamentary chamber that you get here. So one minute each to tell us just a very little bit about the situation for real nationalism in your country. Gonzalo, I'll start with you. We'll work this way. One minute. Well, as you know, we have the elections last Sunday, and there's this new populistic party uh, that gained 15% uh, of votes. This is uh, positive from the point of view that for the first time in Spain, in 40 years of democracy, there is a party that we can say is talking about uh, things that in Democracia Nacional we are defending 20 years. Uh, from the point of view of the real nationalists, like Democracia Nacional, we will have hard times because we have to probably wait a few years till they show the real face to the Spanish people, that they are not people who are really caring for the, for the nation, and uh, then it will be our op opportunity then, as we did the last 20 years, saying the, the truth and what will happen in Spain with immigration and all these uh, separatist policies. Okay. Thank you. Ooh, about 45 seconds. Very, very good. Milan. I think that the situation, uh, situation, situation in Slovakia comparing uh, uh, with situation in Western countries is uh, better, I think, in terms of nationalism. But, uh, however, uh, there is still a lot of people to be convinced uh, to open their eyes because they are, of course, uh, you know, blindly uh, believing uh, to uh, information from mass media. You know, and of course, they, uh, according to this information, we are all extremists and uh, uh, we are bad people. Mm -hmm. And uh, people who don't uh, check facts, who don't check or uh, who don't know us personally on, or don't care about our party, about our program, they tr tend to believe such information. So the situation uh, generally is not as bad as uh, in uh, Western countries, but uh, we still have a lot of work to do uh, to gain uh, enough uh, power, enough uh, uh, voters uh, to really change the politics in Slovakia. 
Thank you, and thank you for your party, uh, for Mr. Cook, Labour and so on, for being an inspiration thank to nationalists all over the world. Uh, let's go uh, next to Tudor. We'll finish with the, one of the grand old men of European nationalism. <laughs> Tudor, the situation in Romania, very briefly. Well, <clears throat> nationalism definitely is the only ideology that protects the nation. Liberalism, socialism and other ideologies definitely work against our nations. Uh, in Romania, for instance, uh, we had uh, during the past uh, 30 years, since the fall of communism, only social, socialist and liberal governments. Uh, nationalists have never been in power. Nationalists have never been in government. Uh, so right now we have uh, a liberal government. Next year we will have local elections in June and parliamentary elections in November. Uh, we will definitely run in these elections. We will try uh, to form an alliance. We are currently uh, doing this, talking about this and doing this. And uh, we, uh, are, we have no doubt that uh, Romanians will uh, head towards this nationalist alternative for Romania, which is the only true alternative. And by the way, is the only alternative for the 5 million Romanians mm -hmm. to come back to Romania. Thank you very much. Again, um, Romania has a very special place in the heart uh, of nationalists all over the world who admire the memory of the captain and uh, we wish you all the best. Uh, so, finally, we'll close um, by giving right, two minutes or one minute thirty uh, to uh, uh, one of the old fighters of uh, Golden Dawn uh, and uh, the fight for, for Greece. Uh, Athanasios, over to you. I'll use the privilege you offered me just now to express my deepest feelings about our struggling fatherland. As always, as, as everywhere in whole Europe, we have to fight in a double front against the powers of the liberal establishment, which now rules the fatherland, and also against the tremendous mass of the left, traditional, through Stalinist or new left, which uh, had governed the fatherland the, during the last um, uh, government. I believe that all comrades and all our friends know that uh, the movement is under tremendous pressure due to a five, almost five year uh, judicial mm -hmm. persecution, which till now we couldn't afford all the pressures and all the uh, effects they had upon us. And you know also the missing of our fallen comrades who were executed by the Red criminals. Thank you very much. We're absolutely spot on time. So thank you for, me, for you for joining us today. Thank you to uh, comrades from Spain, Slovakia, Britain, Greece, and Romania, we all work together and we look forward to seeing you again.